Welcome to Watts 3010 Introduction to Web Development. This course is part of the certificate in the Web Technology and Application Studies at Seattle University. I'm Becky Peltz and I'm going to walk you through the set of tutorials for the Skills One repo which teach you the basics of HTML and CSS. There will be a separate video for each tutorial in the Skills One repo. You will only have to fork the repo once and publish to GH Pages once, but I'll point this out in every video. <clears throat> the Skills One repo prepares you for Project One, a page with internal navigation. So let's take a look at what we're going to do today. Today we're going to look at this, the CSS Inheritance and Specificity tutorial. And in this tutorial, we'll be focusing on adding CSS to an existing web page, uh, basically existing tags. And we're actually going to start with the web page that was created in the uh, semantics and uh, structure tutorial. So the instructions are here on the README. And then down here at the bottom, you can see that we're going to take that page created in the first tutorial and we're going to add some kind of crazy colors and font sizes and font styles to it. So we're we're just breaking into using CSS and we're going to um, also want to focus on seeing there are three different ways that we can add styles to a web page. We can create an external style sheet which is the preferred way. We can add style tags and we can also add a style attribute. So attributes are new and to, to our learning, and basically they just allow us to put a little bits of information within the tag to, um, to somehow provide direction on how it renders or what kind of functionality it has. So we'll be seeing the three ways to add CSS. Um, so let's start in, and we've got if you haven't already forked it, of course, you're going to want to fork the 3010 skills. Um, but if you forked it, if you worked on the first uh, tutorial, you'll have it forked and you'll have a project set up on your local drive, <clears throat> which you can work on it in VS Code. And that's what I've got. So I'm going to return to that project, the 3010 skills one project, and look at the README here <clears throat> for inheritance and specificity. And again, this is really an intro to working with CSS. So we'll look at the three ways to add styles. <clears throat> we'll do a little bit of experimentation. Uh, and then we'll try to get a page that looks like this. And there are instructions to, to achieving that. So let's start in on that. All right, so we're going to work on this CSS inheritance and specificity. And we're just going to follow these directions. So um, we're going to, again, learn about how to use external style sheets, the internal style tag, and the inline style attribute, three different ways to add CSS to a web page. <clears throat> and we'll hope to see that, the, that this external style sheet is the preferred way. Um, but the, you'll also want to be looking for how how inheritance works. So basically the style that's closest, like in proximity to the tag, is the one that's going to win. It's, so the closest style is going to be the one that gets applied to a tag. That means the inline style will, will win over the internal style, and the internal style wins over the external style. Um, and when we talk about specificity, you're going to look, you're going to see how we can create rules for CSS using either tags, which are very broad, they cover all the tags on the page, or classes, which is the preferred way, where we, where we are able to assign a class to multiple elements on the page. And then finally, inline, where, <clears throat> or, and then finally, the we have classes, and then we have IDs, which are unique. You can only have one ID of a given name per page. Um, so it's very specific. And we don't always want things that specific. In fact, you won't see very many IDs used in a style sheet. But they are they will work there, so we're going to look at how that might look. So let's start in here. We're going to first copy the index.html. You can see, let's open this side by side. 
and we'll just move that over there. So we've got, if we're going to oh, grab this index and copy it into here. So we want to be sure that we're operating on the index that is located under under step two. And you can hover over these names and it should show you the full path. So let's just see what that looks like before we do anything. Yep, that looks as expected. There's no colors. So our next instruction tells us to create a new directory called CSS with a containing a file called style.css. So right-clicking on the the uh, number two uh, directory, we create CSS, another directory, and you can tell their directories versus file based on this icon, the arrow, and then we'll create a new file. And this will be style.css. And with that in place, we can now link that file in. So we'll create a link tag, and the link tag uses a rel equals style sheet, and that just says this is this particular link tag is used to bring in a style sheet. And the href is going to give us a reference to where this is located, which will be under CSS, style.css. And we don't have a closing tag on the link because it doesn't have any contents. All it's going to do is give the browser directions to load the, uh, the file containing style.css. With that, we can look back at our instructions, and the next step is to create a style tag within the HTML. So this is a HTML tag, and it goes in the head, this, this unrendered section of, of HTML, and this is where we can place internal styles. And that takes care of two types of styles, and then we'll see how we get the, the style attribute in there for the third one. So now we'll start adding styles, and the first direction says make the default background color black and the font color white for the page by specifying the body selector and using background color and color properties in the external style sheet. So to do that, I'm going to open up the external style sheet. I'm going to use the body selector, and this creates, you know, a full rule for a full statement for CSS. Um, you know, the syntax is to give it a selector, and you'll see these can get a lot more involved, these selectors. And then the open and closing curly braces, and inside we do the properties and values. So we're going to do a background. You can see that VS Code gives you some hints. Color, black. And we're going to do <clears throat> color. This will be the text color, white. Okay, so that is our first style, and let's take a look at how that looks. So, open with live server, and you can see it, it changed the background to black and the foreground to white. Now, I've got a couple of links here and there in the resources that help you to see um, how you can specify color, and there's many ways to specify it. And um, you're going to learn ways to use variables for colors, too, but we're basically using this, um, we're just giving it, we're using the named color. And you can find references, you can Google for references, but they can be as simple as orange or red, or there's a Rebecca purple. But anyway, you can, you can, there are named colors, and then there are hex colors, there are RGB colors, red, green, blue, and believe it or not, hex is really just, the first two are red, green, blue, so red, green, blue, and then RGB. There's um, hue, saturation, and light, and there's HSLA where you have a something dealing with opacity. So there are many ways to do colors. We're going to just be using these named colors right now. So the next step is to make all the headers red by default in the external style sheet. And so I'll, I'll just type in all of the headers, there's six of them, H6. Now these aren't always best practices that I'm doing here, but this is more of an experimentation type of tutorial where we just want to see the effects of these things. So if I want all of the text red by default, I just set that to red. 
And if I go back out and look at my page, you can see that all the headers are now red. So it goes in pretty quickly. Um, number three, we're going to create a span tag style in the external style sheet in which the font color is orange and the font size is 1.5 rems. So rems is a particular sizing. Um, let's see. So if you look at font size, you can see there are many ways to specify font sizes. And there's actually a set of, um, we'll use quite a few of these. But rems is a, um, rems uh, stand for root m. And m is a measure, so these are all kind of units of measure. There can be pixels, which refers to the actual pixels on a screen. m's, which refers to the kind of default size of the, of the character m. And rems is kind of a twist on that, where you're dealing with the default size of an M, but you're looking at the root M. So it's not as it gets smaller as you get more nested. So we're going to use rems because they tend to hold their size even as the screen size changes. So we're, again, being asked to use, to set up, and we don't, you won't see, you will, you'll see We'll see span tags very much in a style sheet, but we're going to do it here. This is an inline style. We're going to be learning about inline and block. It allows us to um, create. Uh, you'll see it used a lot when we want to color something within a line without adding a line feed to it. So we're going to make the color orange and the font size 1.5 rem. And you can format this too, it is formatable. Um, and you can see here it says um, span is a non semantic style like div, span is inline by default, whereas div is blocked by default. Inline meaning that you don't get a line feed. <clears throat> inline styles render horizontally, block styles render vertically. So there's a little explanation about span um, using block and span. Next, number four, we're going to be doing uh, it's the internal style sheet. So we're going to go back to our index.html, and the internal style sheet is, is within the style tag. And we're going to say that h2 and h3 should have the color blue. Let's have a look at what we've got out there now. Yes, so now we've got, oh, looks like our h3 didn't get it. Oh no, H2, we have this our H1, our H2, our H3. So we've got those as blue, and then we're going to add an inline style attribute to the H1 tag, specifying the color green. So now we get into the third type, which is the inline. So we're going to create an attribute, and an attribute always has uh, the pattern of you'll have an, a name for the attribute, equals, and then quotes. And in the quotes, you give it whatever values that particular attribute can take. And for styles, we actually give them the rules, whatever rules. So we can, it's as if, it's as if we've already done the selection just by placing it there. So we can just give it rules. And the rule here would be that the color is green. And we still put the semicolon in. That's, that's, you need to have that semicolon there. So that turned our header green. And then we're told, add an inline style to the H2 tag, specifying the color should be fuchsia. So style equals color fuchsia. And notice that we created a blue for H2 there, but now we're telling it that it should be uh, fuchsia. So the one that should win is, like I said, the one closest would be the fuchsia. And sure enough, the H2 is fuchsia. So that kind of shows you there that, you know, you're, you're getting more, your inheritance is happening very, wherever your closest, whatever your close, whatever the closest style is, is going to win. Um, you're going to obviously inherit from all of them, but the one that wins is the one that's closest. And then the specificity, of course, is these are not very specific. They're at the tag level. 
but um, this is very specific because it's at this particular tag, not just you know an instance of tag. So um, the next thing we're told to do is to work on the footer, and we're going to use this HTML entity. So this is special characters, and we can find special characters. Let's see. So HTML special characters. You can see that Google gives you some samples here, and you can uh, go in, let's say, W3 school. So feel free to Google any time when you're working on this. Devs Google all the time. You can't remember everything. But you can see there's a bunch of different special um, characters. And what we're told here is we're going to use this. There's two ways you might see a special character. It could come out as a numeric with the ampersand, pound, and semicolon, or it could use a word that's sort of descriptive of what it's doing. And in this case, we're going to use the and copy. So we're going to replace the word copyright with this and copy. Um, and that's a little bit about how entities and special characters work. And then wrap the copyright uh, in the dates in a span tag with an attribute of copyright. So we're going to use the code, VS Code ability to wrap. So we do our command or control shift P, type in wrap, and then type in span. And you can see we've just wrapped span tags around this copy and the dates. And then style the copyright span with the color aqua. So um, let's see, we're going to create a span, a span tag with an ID copyright. So we're going to say ID equals copyright. So now we're getting very specific because there can only be one ID on this page. So if I, if I then go to the style sheet, and if I'm styling with IDs, I use a hash. You'll see we use a dot with classes. So for this very unique thing, and we want to make the color aqua. So um, this is how we select an ID when we're in a style sheet. And if I go to my page, let's just check and see if that worked. You can see, yeah, I got this copyright, and it's aqua. And it talks a little about IDs and classes. So classes can be used in many places, whereas ID is only one. Um, and there's some questions to think around. All right, so um, we're now down at 8 here, um, and we're told to wrap this text in the long run, men only hit what they aim at, and the voice is what we hear in solitude, in a span, the class attribute of important. So let's find this text. I'm just going to command shift, or just command F or on Mac, control F on Windows, and do a search for in the long run. Okay, and so having found that, what I'm going to do to wrap it is I'm going to select it just using my shift and an arrow key to manually select this. You can do it however you want. Um, and then we do our control or command shift P, wrap, and wrap it with a span. Okay, and then we are told to give it a class equals important. Okay, and then we've got to find the voices we hear in solitude. So the voices, okay, so we'll just select voices we hear in solitude, command shift P, wrap it. You can do this manually, but this is kind of a handy way to do it. Hit enter, and again, class equals important. So now we've got two um, chunks of text that we want to style the same, and, and we're calling it important. And to do that, we're going to go to our style sheet, external style sheet. And to code classes, we use the dot. So hash is for IDs, dot is for classes. And we're going to, to do this. We're going to set the font style to italics. Font style. 
to italics and anything else. And the font weight bold. There actually is a B tag in HTML that can do bold, but don't use it. It's 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 still there because it's been there from the beginning, but we've moved away from using HTML to create styles. Um, and then the color is going to be white. Okay. And so if we go look at our page now, let's see. Oops. Let's pull that back up. So right click, open with live server. And yes, so those come out a little bit bigger. And I'm not seeing the italics. So let's take a look at that. Font style. Italics. Not italics, but italic. So yes, it's very visual work. So I'm looking for italic. I see it. I see it's bolder and whatnot. So I think we're done. If we look at this picture down here, and actually you can also go to the images directory and, and look at it there, and you can close others. Close all, and you can kind of blow that picture up a little. And yes, I think we're looking like we intended it. So <clears throat> the next step, would be to control tick, open up the terminal, get status, and get add, get commit, um, add specificity, inheritance, get push. Okay, and if I go back out to my code, let's see. my skills code and I open up this published link yes I've got it in place so again to recall publishing is just we don't have to do it again if, if you already did it for the first tutorial it just involves selecting the master branch for github pages under um, under settings and then we end up with um, our URL now I've got a DNS name so this is what it looks like. Yours would probably look more like beckypeltz.github.io slash watt skills and then specificity. All right. And um, yes, so if you just brought that up, you could just click on there to see that. So that, that concludes our work with um, introducing how to incorporate CSS into a web page. And just a quick look at colors and some font size, font styles that you could use. There are lots of good resources on this. Um, there's MDN, uh, Mozilla Developer Network. You can look at what some of the values and units for um, for working with. You know, as I mentioned, there's pixels, rems, m's, percent. There, um, you can look up colors, find out more about how colors are specified. And then uh, you can also look at font size, different ways that fonts are specified. So um, I hope that that helps you get going with CSS. Oh, I'm going to remind you again, um, it's easy to forget what you want to turn in. Um, turn in, you know, you can turn in this link. You can actually just turn in the skills one link and I will be able to tell, you know, for sure. I will be able to, to navigate to all of the assignments. But turn in a link for skills one and turn in a link for the code on skills one. And actually this will all be in one assignment so just you know, just one time you'll be turning it in and that'll give me access to all the code and all the rendered code so that I can check out and see if you got it. All right. Oh, I'm going to remind you again, um, it's easy to forget what you want to turn in. Um, turn in, you know, you 
can turn in this link. You can actually just turn in the skills one link and I will be able to tell, you know, for sure, I will be able to, to navigate to all of the assignments. But turn in a link for skills one and turn in a link for the code on skills one. And actually this will all be in one assignment so just you know just one time you'll be turning it in and that will give me access to all the code and all the rendered code so that I can check out and see if you got it. All right.